Okay. okay. So now we can rewrite the expression as x is equal to 2143 minus 1290 minus 54. Okay, so let's clear these drawings out and let's do that. So x equals 2143 minus 1290 minus 54. Okay. And we can do these operations one right after the other. So let's do the first one, right? 2143 minus 1290. And you can do this in your calculator. We can do it here also. Three minus zero is three, okay? You can't subtract nine from four, but you can subtract nine from 14. This is zero, All right? So 14 minus nine is five, okay? This is a zero, so we need to borrow one from this place. That's a 10, this becomes eight, and that becomes 853, okay? So we can rewrite this now, right, as x equals 853, minus 54, all right? So now we can do this operation. What's 853 minus 54? Well, you have to borrow one from the fives place here. And that makes 13, okay? 13 minus four is nine. This becomes a four. We borrow one from the eights place, this becomes 14 and this becomes seven. 14 minus five is nine and this becomes 799, okay? So the answer is 799, okay? And you can check to see if that's true by going back and putting 799 in the original problem, okay? So if we do that, right, 1290 plus 799 plus 54 equals 2143. And if you do that, put it in your calculator just to check, you'll see that that's a true statement, right? 1290. Twelve ninety plus seven ninety nine plus fifty four. Yes, twenty one forty three. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's how you do those kinds of questions. All right. So let's look at um, the next question. Okay. Find the mean of the set of numbers 50, 12, 25, 13, and 10, okay? The mean is the same as the average, right? Mean in this case means average. Okay. I did that. You did that, what did you get? I get 22. 22, okay. So let's check it. Cool. 50 plus 12 plus 25 plus 13 plus 10 equals, and then we're going to divide that by 3, 3, 4, divide by 5. Get 
15. Okay. So go again, right? 50 plus 12 plus 25 plus 13 plus 10, right? That's 110. Mm -hmm. Ten. We add them together, right? Okay. And then you have to divide that by the number of values, one, two, three, four, five, five right? Five by five, right? So let's do that. Divide by five, and that's gonna give us 22. There it is, 22. So we're good. So that's 22. 22. Yeah. All right. So we'll clear this out. Here, right? All right. Find the mean of the set of numbers 24, 10, 30, 25, and 21. Once you get there, I get it. It's 22. Do it again. There you go. All right. 15 times 72. Once you get there. Mm, I I didn't get it. Okay, all right, so let's write it out. So 72 times 15, okay? So we'll do 72 times five first, right? So two times five is 10, right? Seven times five is 35 plus one is 36, okay? And then we've got 72 times one, so we're gonna put a seven and a two here, right? And that's gonna give us zero. Six plus two is eight. Six plus seven is 10, and that's 1080. 1080. So you could do it like this, or if you want, there, there's nothing that says you can't do it by adding the value of 72 times five and 72 times 10, because that'll give you the same thing, okay? So 72 times 10, is 720, right? And then 72 times five is half of that, which is 360. And then you can add 720 and 360. Right. Zero, that's eight, that's 10. Okay. All right, let's clear those. Okay. Let's move down. All right. Convert 718 p.m. standard time to universal time. So what'd you get for that? Did you do that one? I didn't do the, the rest. Okay, so 718 p.m. all right, means that we are after 12 noon, right? So if it were 718 a.m., it would be 0718, right? But this is 718 p.m., so we have to add 1,200 to that, right? 
So this becomes 18, 18, okay? And the reason that people use universal or it's sometimes called military time is so you don't make mistakes with AM and PM. So some hospitals will do it in, in universal or military time, okay? The hours and the minutes. Clear that. All right, 28 divided by 576. What'd you get for that? Did you do that one? No, oh, I didn't I didn't do the rest. Okay, so 576 divided by 28. All right. All right, so there's here's 57, right? So can 28 go into 57? And the answer is yes, it can go into 57 twice, right? And that will give us 56, okay? Then we can bring one down, seven by six is one, that's 16, okay? And we need to add a zero here in order to be able to put something in that makes sense. So it's gonna be 20, right? And after the decimal point, right? We need to go into 160, right? So 28 goes into 160, how many times? Well, 28 times 10 is 280. So 28, let's try 28 times five and see what that gives us. Okay, so that's 40, two times five is 10 and that's 14. And that's pretty close, right? So 20.5, 140, okay. And then we would subtract 20 there. That would give us 200. And I'm gonna say uh, 28 times, let's try 28 times seven. Times seven is 56. Three times seven is 14 plus five is 196, so that's pretty good, 196, okay, and that leaves four, there's 40, right, so throw a seven in there, right, and we can just keep going, we'll just carry it out to two decimal places, let's see what we get, 576, divided by 28, 20.57, and then it goes 1428, okay. So we'll just go with, with uh, 20.57. Okay. So that's long division. Now, of course, you could do this on your calculator very easily, right? But the idea is that you want to be able to do it by hand. All right, so let's clear this. All right, All right. the heights of Michelle family members are 67, 68, 69, and 70 inches and 60 inches. Find the range in height of Michelle's family members, right? So we want to go from the highest to the lowest value. Well, the highest value is 70, all right? And the lowest value is 60, right? So the range is gonna be from 70 to 60. 70 to 60. Okay. I just wanna check something real quick. Let's do window and let's do this one. Okay, split. Do, 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 do how they do range. Okay, so from 70 to 60, all right, that range is 10 inches. Okay. 
70 minus 60 is equal to 10. Okay. All right, 453 divided by 22. Okay, let's bring these out. All right, so we write down 453. Divided by so four fifty three divided by twenty two, right? Twenty two won't go into four, but it will go into forty five, and it will go into forty five twice to give you forty four, right? Drop one down here, right? There's the three, 13. 22 won't go into 13, but it will go into 130. So we put a zero here with a decimal point, okay? And how many times is it gonna go into 130? Well, 22 times 10 is 220. 22 times five is 110. So that's pretty close, right? So we'll put a five here, put a 110 here. Okay, and then that brings down a 20, that's a 200, okay? So here we go again, 22 times 10 is 220. So 22 times nine is what we want, uh, nine, right? And 22 times nine, two times nine is 18. 18, 19, that's 198, 198, okay? And then that's gonna give us a two again, and that means it's gonna be another nine, and the nines are just gonna go out forever. So it's gonna be 20.599, okay? That's long division, long division. Something that you probably haven't done in a long time. Yeah. because everybody relies on their calculator these days, right? You could put this in your calculator and get the answer very quickly, okay? All right, 32 times 104, right? So here we go, 104 times 32, okay? There's two ways to do this. I could do 104 times two plus 104 times 30, right? Or I could do 104 times 32. Let's do it this way, so. Four times two is eight. Zero times two is zero. One times two is two, 208, okay? I've got to move over one place. Four times three is 12, right? Zero times three is zero plus one, which is one, okay? Uh, sorry, not adding, multiply, right? Three, okay? And then one times three is three. All right. No, no, it is that. Sorry, that is added. My mistake. We add them to the total. So if you do that, you bring it down, eight, two, three, three, 33, 28, right? Now let's do it the other way. Let's do it 104 times two. Right, that's 208, right? And then we can do 104 times 30. So we do zero, right? Zero and zero. And when we move over a spot, four times three is 12, okay? Put a one here and three, okay? So it becomes 3120, right? And we would add that to 208. <coughs> and that would give us 3328. 
so 3328. Um, double check that. Yep, 3328. Okay, get all this out. All right, we got subtraction, 9872 minus 789, right? And here we go again. Okay, 9872 minus 789. Two minus nine can't do that, but 12 minus nine, we can do that. This becomes six, right? So 12 minus nine, that's gonna be three, right? Six minus eight can't do that, but you can do 16 minus eight, and this becomes seven. That becomes eight, and that becomes zero. And this becomes eight, no, no, nine. So 9083, 9083. That's not a, yeah, 903 up here. This is a long problem. So that's the ratio here. That. Okay. So it's 9083. All right, let's clear these off. Okay, now we've got another problem where we have to solve for the unknown, right? 4270 plus something equals 4,447. So the way we're gonna do this again is use a variable in here. We'll call it X, right? And we're gonna solve for X, okay? So it's the same approach that we had before, right? 4720, 4270 rather, 4270 plus x plus 108 equals four, 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 seven. So we want to subtract this value and this value from both sides. So let's do that, okay? Minus 108 minus 4270, okay? And we can eliminate those values now from this part of the equation. We've subtracted them away. And that becomes our new problem to solve, right? X is equal to 4,447 minus 108, minus 4270, okay? So let's do that and we'll do it stepwise, okay? Let's keep that up here for now. I'll work it down here. Okay. All right, so 4,447 minus 108, what do we get? Okay. Now, seven minus eight, you can't do that, but 17 minus eight, that's okay. And that makes this a three, right? So 17 minus eight is going to be nine. Okay. Nine and eight is 17. And three minus zero is three. And four minus one is three. And four minus nothing is three. So 4339. And then we can take 4339. And we want to subtract the 4270 from it, right? So 4270, make sure know that's a nine, right? Nine minus zero is nine. Three minus seven, can't do that, but you can do 13 minus seven. And that's going to be six. This becomes a two, two minus two is zero. 
four minus four is zero. So this 69, okay, that equals 69. Let's double check our work to make sure we're good. Okay, so get all this. Seven minus 108 equals minus 4270 equals, there it is, 69. Okay, let's clear that out. All right, convert 1254 p.m. standard time to universal time, okay? So what would you get for that? What would that be? how you do that you'd add 1200 right to that value right you're going to end up with 2354 okay let's do that here We already did that one. Let's go, Peter. Okay. Convert seven eighteen p.m. standard time to universal time. Okay. And if we do that, right, we're going to come up with eighteen eighteen. Nineteen eighteen. I'm sorry, my mistake. My addition was off. Did that one? Okay. We do this one here. Ninety eight seventy two minus seven eighty nine. Twelve minus nine is three. This becomes six, so this becomes sixteen, so this becomes eight, this becomes seven, that becomes zero, and that's nine. Nine zero eight three. Okay. There it is. Okay, that's another repeater. There's some repeaters in here. Okay. Yeah, I think those are all repeaters. Okay, so that was the whole numbers worksheet. Okay. There were some repeated problems in there, but that happens. So let's go to the next one I sent you.
Ini. Okay, so this is week two test. Week two quiz. Yeah, so here we go. All right. So we start with the first one. Two hundred plus what is three fifty six? Okay, so it's the same idea here, right? We have to put a variable in here, all right? And then we have to start making it so that the variable is the only thing on one side of the equal sign. Okay, so two hundred plus x equals three fifty six. I have to subtract 200 from both sides. So 200 plus X minus 200 equals 356 minus 200. And the reason we do that is so that we do the same thing on both sides of the equal sign to keep this statement true, okay? So now, we can cancel some stuff, so let's do that, right? The 200s will go away. They're gone here and here, okay? And so now we can rewrite the expression x is equal to 356 minus 200. Okay, so let's do that subtraction. 356 minus 200 is gonna give us 156. So there's your answer, 156. Okay. All right, we can move down. Four fifty divided by five. Okay, so this is long division. Okay, so four fifty divided by five. Okay, does five go into four? No. Does five go into forty five? Yes, and it goes into forty five nine times. Okay. So that's 45, okay? That leaves zeros down here, okay? And that makes this a zero here, okay? So 90 times five is gonna give you 450, okay? And one of the ways that you can tell that, right, is if you were to, divide 450 by 10, okay, you would get 45, right? Well, five is half the size of 10. So it's gonna be double that if it's five and that's gonna be 90, okay? All right, we can move down. Go to mouse. Find the mean of the numbers 45, 80, 65, and 23, okay? So if you haven't done that yet, why don't, we, why don't you try to do that now? Find the average of these. Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, I I do that. What'd you get? I get 53.25. Okay. So again, this is to find the average, right? The average here. Mean is the average. So how do we do that? 45 plus 80 plus 65 plus 23, right? And then we're gonna divide that by one, two, three, four, divide by four, right? So if we do that, yeah, 45 plus 80 plus 65 plus 23 equals 213. Right, so this becomes 213. We can divide that by four, okay? That's gonna give you 53 and a quarter. Here. So fifty three point two five. Okay. All right. Three hundred and thirty three divided by three. Did you do that one? No. What'd you get? Should have gotten 111, right? This three goes into three evenly, right? One time each. And if you want to check that, right, you can always multiply 111 by three, okay? And what happens if you do that? You get 333. All right. Of that. Okay. That's mouse. Okay. Here we go. The heights of Fred's family members are 48, 58, 67, 85, and 54 inches. Find the range in height for Fred's family members. Okay. So of these, what's the biggest value here? Eighty-five. Eighty-five, right? Okay. All right, and then what's the smallest value? Fifty-four. I mean, for, I mean, forty-eight. Forty-eight, right? Okay. So eighty-five minus forty-eight. So let's see what that is, right? Eighty-five minus 48, okay. Well, five from eight, you can't do that, but you can do 15 minus eight, 
okay? And that's seven. Eight becomes seven, and that becomes 37. So it's a range of 37 inches. Go. Not too bad, right? Okay. Move down. Good mouse. 25 times 72. Okay. Why don't you try that by hand and see what you get? Check that. Mm -hmm. Is that what you got? Eighteen hundred. I need twenty twenty five times. Seventy two. Did you get eighteen hundred? Yes. There we go. Good. All right. Moving down. Convert 901 p.m. standard to universal time. Okay. So this is straightforward. All we're going to do is add 1200, right? So let's do that. All right. So that's going to be 2101. All right, and then let's look here, right? We've got 10, 872 minus 589. Okay, so let's, you work that and I'll work that at the same time. Check it. At ten to eighty three. Eight seventy two. Minus five eight four. Yep, that's right. Okay. All right, move down. Okay, here's another one where you have to solve for the unknown. Okay. So you and I, at the same time, let's both try to find the value of X.
Tell me what you got when you get it. Sixteen and nine. Yep, you got it. I'm good. Okay. Eighteen fifty minus two seventy nine. Let's do that one. What you get? Fifteen seventy one. Good, good, good. Okay. All right. Five hundred divided by twenty two.
Let's see if that works. times 82. Let's work that one together. You get twelve thirty. No, I didn't get twelve thirty. And remember, if you want, you can always break it into right, 15 times two, right, plus 15 times 80. Okay, right? 15 times two is going to be 30. Right? And then 15 times 80. Twelve hundred. Yeah, it is. Ninety eight seventy two minus four sixty eight. Do that one together. Ninety four or four. Good. There you go. All right. Seven eighteen AM from standard to universal time. Pretty easy. It's O. Nine nineteen. No, no. AM. No. Oh. seven one eight. Okay. Oh, yeah. If it were 7.18 p.m., oh. it would be 19.18. Yeah. Moving 
now. Okay. Find the mean. Let's do that. Mean is the average. Twenty eight point six. Nine times five is forty five. Yeah. Okay. Let's get back Three twenty four times thirty five. Let's do that by hand. Check it. Eleven three forty. Yeah. Good. Good. Twenty twenty five divided by thirty. It's going to go into two and two. So one, six, six, I think. Six, seven, seven.
Mm -hmm. 67.5. Is that what you got? I got 67.5. Good. Good. All right, find the mode of that set of numbers there. Okay, now remember what the mode is? The mode is the most frequent number. So what number pops up most frequently in this set? Thanks. Most often. That's the mode. Okay. Moving down. Thirty-two forty times one hundred four. Let's do that one. Ah, that's what I messed up. Sixteen. Sorry. Yeah. Should be Yeah, I made a mistake here. This should be. Just click. Okay, there we go. Put it down. That's it. That's the whole thing. And those are the just the uh, that's just the key answers. Okay, so let's try. The last one I sent you. Okay. All right. So this is some stuff that I don't think we specifically went over last week, but I can show you how to do it now. Okay. All right. So first question says convert 12 and a fourth to an improper fraction. Okay. So an improper fraction is a fraction where The numerator is greater than the denominator. Okay, means that the number on top is bigger than the number on the 
bottom. Okay. So when we see a number like 12 and a fourth, that's the same as saying the number 12 plus the number one fourth. Okay. And what we have to do is we have to turn 12 into something that can be added to one fourth, right? 12 over one is 12 and one fourth is one fourth, right? But I can't add these the way they're set up because the denominators are different. This is a one, and this is a four, right? So I can't add those numerators until the denominators are the same. So the way I have to do this is I have to turn this fraction into something over four, right? Well, one times four is four, and 12 times four is gonna be 48. Right, and then I can add that to one fourth to get 49 over four, okay? That's how you have to do it. The denominators have to match. Just match. You add the numerators. Which is another way of saying that the numbers on the bottom have to be the same in order to add the numbers on the top. Now, when you add fractions that have the same denominator, you only add the numerators together. The denominator stays the same. Okay, and you add these. Okay, so that's how that works. So let's try some more problems here. Yeah. Okay, here's one. Solve seven over 20 divided by one over 100. Okay, so this then demonstrates another principle. Okay, all right. Seven over 20 divided by one over 100 can be rewritten as seven over 20 times 100 over one, okay? Because when you divide something by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying it by what's called its inverse, okay? So this 100 over one is the inverse of one over 100. So now, when you multiply fractions, you can multiply the numerators together and you multiply the denominators together, okay? So this becomes 700 over 20, okay? But with a fraction, you always wanna reduce it to what's called its lowest terms, meaning the the smallest version of that expression, okay? So if I were to divide the top and the bottom by 10, the zeros would go away, right? And I would get 70 over two, okay? And 70 divided by two is 35. So that's 35. All right, let's go to the next one. Please. 
Okay, 12 and a half divided by two fifths. Okay, so 12 and a half divided by two fifths. is equal to 12 and a half times five halves. Okay. Now we have to turn 12 and a half into an improper fraction. So the way that you do that is you take the denominator, you multiply that by the numerator, Okay, and then you add the number here, right? So two times 12 is 24 plus one is 25 over two, okay? We're gonna multiply that by five halves, okay? And when I do that, two times two is four on the bottom. And 25 times five is 125, okay? Now, can 125 over four be reduced? And the answer is, yeah, probably so. If I do that, I can rewrite it, okay? I can rewrite it. I can say, let's see here. And what's that number? Four times three, four times 30 is 120. Let's see here. Right, that is 120 over four plus five over four. I divide top and bottom of this by four. That goes in there once. That goes in there 30 times. Okay. So this becomes 30 and five fourths. Okay. And I can rewrite 30 as five fourths as 31 and one fourth. 31 and a quarter. So it's a very important principle, right? When you, let's um, clear all this out. Okay. So to convert what's called a mixed number, this is an example of a mixed number. an improper fraction. We'll do like this, right? We'll take 12 and a half as an example, right? 12 and a half. Multiply two by 12. Okay. And add this numerator, right? So that becomes 25 over two. Okay. Two times 12 is 24, plus one is 25. There it is, All right, down. Let's tackle these. 49 and a third minus three and 11 twelfths, okay. So first step here is we wanna turn both of these into 
we could turn them both into improper fractions. Okay, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it, all right, is to deal with the whole numbers first, 49 and three. Let's deal with them first, right? 49 minus three is gonna be 46, okay? And then there's gonna be some fractional part that comes next, all right? And that's going to come from subtracting these two fractions. So what is one third minus 11 twelfths? Okay. Well, what is that equal to? We got to get the denominators to be the same. So to do that for one third, we have to multiply the top and the bottom by four. And that gives us four twelfths. Okay minus 11 twelfths, all right? Well, that's an interesting problem. That ends up giving us, okay, four minus 11 is the negative of 11 minus four, right? So 10 minus four is six, 11 minus four is seven. So that's, this is gonna be negative seven twelfths, okay? So that's our fractional part here, negative, seven twelfths, okay? All right, well, I can't write a mixed number like that. I have to write it as a positive number, okay? So the way that I'm gonna deal with this is I'm gonna say that this is equal to 45 and 12 twelfths, which is one, minus seven twelfths. Okay, so 12 minus seven is five. So this becomes 45 and five twelfths. All right, let's move on to the next one. One eighth divided by 175th, okay? So here we go again, right? We've got a fraction divided by a fraction. So we can rewrite this as one eighth times 75 over one right, which is going to equal 75 over 8. So now I have to come up with a mixed number to express this, right? So I'm going to do a little guesswork here. Uh, 8 times 10 is 80. 8 times 9 is 72. Okay, so I can rewrite this as... 72 over eight plus three over eight, right? That's allowed. Okay, 72 over eight, that's gonna be, gonna be nine. Okay. And then three eighths is gonna stay three eighths. This becomes nine and creates a mixed number. If I left it as an improper fraction, that's not, ah, that answer isn't incorrect, but it's not the form in which you would normally express it, okay? This is an improper fraction. should always be expressed as instead should become
mixed numbers. Numbers, that's the shorthand for numbers. Okay. All right, clear this off. Go down. Four and an eighth divided by a fifth. Okay, well, we can tackle that. So here we go. Go back to blue. Okay, four and an eighth plus divided by one fifth. Okay, divided by one fifth. Okay, so we can rewrite this as four and an eighth times five. Okay, now we've got to express four and an eighth as an improper fraction, or we could multiply the whole number part and the fractional part both by five. That's allowed, right? So this would become, if we did that, five times four is gonna give us 20, and five times one eighth is gonna give us five eighths. That's 20 and five eighths. If I did it by converting to an improper fraction, four times eight is gonna give me 32 plus one is 33. So it'd be 33 over eight times five, right? And then I gotta multiply 33 times five. And if I do that, I'm gonna get 150 plus 15, which is 165 over eight, okay? And then what I have to do is convert that into a mixed number, okay? And so if I did that, 20 times eight is 160, right? So I could rewrite this as 160 over eight plus five over eight. Right. 160 over 8 is 20, and it's 5 eighths. So two ways to do it. Two different ways to do the same thing. Okay, clear out here. Go here. Okay. Here's another one, right? 125th divided by 4 one hundredths. Okay, so go here, right? So we can rewrite this, right? That's equal to 1 25th times 100 over 4. OK. Well, guess what 100 over 4 is? It's 25. So that equals 1 25th times 25 which is equal to 25 over 25, which is one. Okay, not too bad. All right, moving down. Clear out. One one hundredth over one tenth. Okay, same idea. Okay, that's the same as one one hundredth times 10. If I flip this, right? So that's 10 over 100, which is one tenth. Because I can divide top and bottom by 10. Okay. All right. Moving down. Okay, here's an interesting one. 101 and a quarter minus 43 and seven eighths. All right, let's deal with that. We can subtract 101 and 43. Let's do that. Okay. 
48. Now we have to subtract one fourth and seven eighths, one fourth minus seven eighths. All right, so again, we have to have the same denominator to do the subtraction, just like we have to have the same denominator to do the addition. So one fourth is the same as two eighths. So this becomes 48 plus two eighths minus seven eighths. Okay, the two minus seven is negative five. So that becomes 48 minus five eighths. Okay which is gonna be what? That's gonna be 47 and three eighths. Okay. All right, moving down. Order the fractions from tiny to big. Okay. In order to do this, we have to have a common denominator in order to evaluate the numerators. Okay. So Common denominator just means a number on the bottom that's the same all the way across, okay? So I have to come up with a number that can be evenly divided by all of these numbers. Okay. So how do you do that? Well, let's look here. One way to do it is to multiply all the numbers together. 14 times eight times seven, times four, okay, and you get a really huge number, okay? The other way to do it is to factor each of these. So 14, eight, seven, and four, okay? So let's do that, let's factor these. Let's see if we can come up with a tinier number again to be divided by all of these, all right? So we do that. 14, you can factor into seven and two. Eight, you can factor into four and two. Seven is just seven. Four is two and two. Okay, four can be factored into two and two. All right, so we got something here. We got seven, we got two, we got two again, okay? So seven times two is 14, and 14 times two is 28, okay? That, I think, is what we call our lowest common denominator, LCD, okay? Now we can convert all these to 28s. So let's do that. Clear some space. Okay. Nine fourteenths is how many 28s? Well, it's 18 28s because you can multiply top and bottom by two. Okay, 
one eighth is how many twenty eighths? Well, seven eight times three twenty four. Let's see here. I messed up here. Twenty-eight. Eight. Uh, it's a fractional amount of times. Uh, it's the same. So, just to try. Yeah, so I didn't get. I didn't quite get the lowest common denominator. Probably. It's not 28, it's probably double that. It's probably instead of 28, it's gonna be 56. We needed another two in there. So we'll just convert this into 36 over 56, right? This becomes seven over 56. Okay, one eight to seven over 56. And then keep going. Three sevenths. How many 56 is that? Well, 56 on the bottom. A times seven is 56 and 21 on the top. Okay. And then we got three quarters. Okay. Well, if eight times seven is 56, then four times 14 is 56. Okay. So top and bottom by 14. equal 56 on the bottom and three times 14 is going to be 28 plus 14 well which is 42 42 over 56 okay all right so now we've got our numbers as 56 all right so nine fourths is 36 over 56 same number, okay? One eighth is seven over 56. Okay. Three sevenths is 21 over 56. And then over here, we got three fourths is 42 over 56. Let's erase the stuff we don't need. So now we can arrange numbers from small to big, right? Because all we have to do now is look at the numerators. Okay, so when we do that, the smallest one is going to be one eighth. One eighth. Put a line here so you can know use the answers. Okay. The next smallest one is going to be three sevenths. Okay. The next smallest one is going to be nine fourteenths. Okay. And then the biggest one is going to be three fourths. And that's the only way I can do a problem like that accurately, right? Because the denominators have to match. And the denominators don't match, then I can't, I can't order these. I could guesstimate, but that might make a mistake. All right, so moving down. There we go. We got three numbers now. Okay. 
14 and 3 fifths plus 20 plus 5 and a sixth. Okay, well, we can deal with the whole number part first. So let's deal with adding 14 to 20 to 5. Okay, well, 20 plus 5 is 25. Plus 14 is going to give us 39. That's easy enough. Okay, so 39 is going to be part of the answer. Now let's add the fractions. Three fifths plus one sixth. What's our problem here? The denominators aren't the same. So we got to make them the same. So what do six and five go into evenly? All right. Well, five times six is 30. Okay. So let's just use that. Right. So this becomes 30. This becomes 30. Okay. And then this is going to be 18. And this is going to be 5. Now we can add them, right? So 18 and 5, right? It's going to be 23 over 30. So this is 39 and 23 thirtieths. That would do a problem like that. Clear this out. Move down. Okay, now we got some multiplication. All right. So tackle this. All right. One and four fifths times six sevenths times two. Okay. Well, a good way to do this is improper fraction. All right, so let's improper fraction one and four fifths. And if you do that, five times one is five plus four is nine. That's nine fifths times six sevenths times, and we can express two as two over one. Okay, do I see anything I can cancel? And the answer is no, I don't. Okay, so. Five times seven is 35, times one is 35, so 35 is on the bottom, okay? Nine times six is 54, times two is 108, okay? So what do we have here? We have an improper fraction, okay? An improper fraction. So now we gotta get this down to its, its mixed number version, okay? So how can I rewrite this? Well, Let's see, 35 times two is 70, 35 times three is 15, three times two is nine, 10, 105, okay, so that's pretty good. So this becomes three, and then I subtract 105 from 108, and we get three 30 fifths. Three and three thirty-fifths. Not too bad, right? Working with them. Yeah, clear this out. All right. Um, I'm going to put a line here so that I remember where we stopped. Because we're at time now. Um, I will send you some more um, tests with answers in them, okay, from these chapters. And then you work them. And then next Friday, when we come back, you show me your answers. I'll ask you what you got. You tell me your answers. And then we'll go uh, wherever you made a mistake. Remember that for these kind of computations where they're just doing whole numbers, they want you to do it by hand, right? So do it by hand and you can double check it with the calculator, okay? All right, Jahari, that's all I have for today. Do you have any questions before we go? Are we good? Okay, 
I will see you next Friday.